I just heard what sounded like a uh, photo frame falling down. Thought nothing of it um, until the following morning where there was a sort of black splatter on the drive. The pieces looked very dark, very kind of jet black. So when we came out later, we had a good scrutiny of it and thought, gosh, this is something special. And then that's when Rob came out. And I sent something out by, uh, to my son on, on the WhatsApp and he uh, came back saying there are reports of fireballs in the area. And it seemed pretty certain to me that those two things were linked. Um, and then after that, I was pretty sure that I was dealing with something from outer space. Scientists tell us it's 4.567 billion years old, and you can't imagine the magnitude of that. But it's a wonderful experience, wonderful to, to think it's coming to Little Winchcombe. Uh, well, today is uh, Sunday, April 25th, and I'm really, really super happy that I have some special guests with me today. And uh, they've asked me to introduce myself and give a little bit of history. And some people on, on YouTube have asked as well. So let me just introduce myself. My name is Topher Spinato. And uh, believe it or not, I actually held my first meteorite only about three years ago. So on Christmas morning of 2017, I bought myself my own meteorite. And <laughs> I was addicted uh, very quickly and started my own company four months later. So I'm currently a member of uh, um, some of the, the best uh, professional organizations for meteorite collectors and enthusiasts, like the International Meteorite Collectors Association, the IMCA, uh, the Meteorite Education and Trade Society. Uh, I'm also a trusted member of the uh, Global Meteorite Association, uh, a pioneer member of the Meteorite Club, and I also sit on the board of directors there as a uh, communications officer. I have uh, seven classifications of official meteorites under my belt, and I'm always looking for more. <laughs> um, I'm not a typical meteorite dealer. I'm more of an educator, and that's kind of what I'm known for is community building and education. So I have a YouTube channel that you guys are appearing on right now, and it's called the Knowledge Bowl Live. And uh, right now, over 127 hours are consumed every day. It's all about meteorites, meteorite science, and space exploration. Uh, I'm also known for doing live broadcasts. So I go to different rock shows like Tucson, Quartzsite. Uh, I go to ASU, uh, Center for Meteorite Studies, and do live broadcasts from there as well. Um, and I do something that's really cool in Tucson where the big uh, rock show is annually. I rent a big house and have everyone from the world come in and join me, including Juan, uh, who you guys have met, and uh, called the Meteorite Mansion. And we have uh, rock saws there. We have lapidary equipment and, and uh, microscopes. And we just kind of geek out and, and, uh, and have fun for 16 days or so. Um, and, and part of my hobby and passion about, the, about this too is I love uh, mentoring and, and helping newer collectors uh, find their way and also people transitioning from collect enthusiastic collectors into dealers, uh, help them mentor them a little bit of how to, how to do that successfully. So that's a little bit of who I am in a nutshell. I, I, take, I take meteorites pretty seriously, uh, as you can probably tell. Uh, I did not sleep last night. I stayed awake all night because I did not want to. I did not want to miss. I didn't oh. want to risk missing you guys. That's how important it is, this, this is to me. So, without further ado, I'm going to introduce um, uh, two of our very uh, special guests. Uh, we have uh, Catherine and Hannah Wilcock from UK, uh, actually from the town of. Winchcombe, and uh, you may uh, recognize them. For, and also, we have a Roger with us. So, hello, Roger. Roger Jones. Hello. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, Rob uh, Rob Wilcox is, is is also in the frame. I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> no problem. <laughs> reading you. <laughs> yeah. So, um, I guess from what I, the stories that I've there's only like a few videos or posts about uh, the meteorite. Uh, uh, and the amazing events that happened to you guys. Um, I guess, uh, Hannah, you were the one who heard something when it actually happened. Can you explain what you heard and what yeah, was going I mean, on? What were, what were you doing? 
uh, I certainly didn't think I heard a meteorite, put it that way. <laughs> um, I was just just uh, in my in my room, sort of minding my own business, looking at looking at staycations actually, um, and I heard a, a shattering sound. Um, it's where we live is quite a quiet street. You know, the, the road is quite quiet, so you you, you do hear um, reasonably well. Mm -hmm. And I, I heard something shatter, got up to have a look around, see what it was, because it was a bit of an unusual noise. Mm -hmm. um, thought something had perhaps fallen out of the window, because I did have the window open at that point. Um, but to my knowledge, nothing had. Um, and I didn't think, I honestly didn't think anything else of it, because why, why would you? You don't think, oh, yes, that, of course, that's a meteorite, you know, um, you just sort of, sort of carry on. And it, it was dark. And of course, meteorites are, are, are black. So you don't, you don't see anything um, mm -hmm. until the next morning when I opened my curtains and where, where the meteorite landed is more or less directly below my bedroom. So um, I, you know, it was very hard to miss in, in the daylight as to what this sort of um, black splatter was. And, uh, and here we are now. <laughs> <laughs> now, when you approached it for the first time, I, I heard that you said it kind of looked like charcoal briquettes or, or someone's barbecue kind of dumped out. And, and in the picture, it kind of does. Yeah, well, I uh, drew the curtains in the lounge and looked out, you know, Hannah had seen it from her bedroom, I looked at it from the lounge, and that's exactly what it looked like. Well, at first I thought, well, maybe it's an oil spill, one of the cars has had an accident there or something, but they were parked further down the drive, because this had happened at the top of our drive near the door, so I did think, oh, well, maybe that is... Um, <laughs> Uh, somebody's had a barbecue, you know, because that's how it looked, an upturned barbecue with all the coals and the ash uh, there. But then, um, you know, who's going to have a barbecue in the middle of lockdown on our drive? <laughs> in February in England, it's a bit cold, so yeah. it seemed very unlikely somehow. It, it really did look as if yeah. someone had sort of thrown coal at the driveway yeah. or something like that. Yeah. Um, it was, it was, that was, uh, that was actually one of the comments that I made to yeah. a friend originally was, do you reckon someone's been driving around the Cotswolds <laughs> lobbing coal at people's drive? It seems more likely, doesn't yeah. it? And a super yeah. super rare meteorite, you know. I, I, <laughs> if I was a betting, if I was a betting man, I bet on charcoal briquettes rather than space rocks for sure. Yeah, 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 yeah exactly. you do. You think exactly. that's much more likely, don't you? All of, all of those are the things that it looked like, though, didn't seem to make any sense because it was so far away from the road. You know, there, yeah. there wouldn't be anything coming from the road, mm -hmm. and therefore you start thinking, well, it, it must have come down from the sky. So mm -hmm. if it's come down from the sky. It's, it's either got to be a bit of an aircraft and it didn't look like a piece of an aircraft because it wasn't metal. So then you think, well, if it's not a piece of, of an aircraft and it's come down from the sky, then perhaps it has, it's something even more exotic than that. So you know, gradually you, 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 your thoughts go, go to that. Yeah. And, and there was a lot on the, on the web, wasn't there? And you sent a WhatsApp to our son yeah. uh, and he came back and said, oh, have you read about the fireball? Um, incident which we hadn't we hadn't really <laughs> so um then it did seem like it probably had come I, from I, I space think, yeah, even more the, the next step along the kind yeah. of realization was that the fireball which they on the reports of the fireball they showed a, a, a kind of an oblong as to where this fireball mm -hmm. had had possibly deposited meteorites and and we were right in the middle of that i think that was the point when i started to think oh <laughs> this, this could be something here. Wow. Uh, you know, and, and gradually, um, as we saw more of things on the web like that, we, 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 we realised that perhaps we, we were in the middle of, of what could have been meteorites. Uh, so we wow. followed the instructions, you know, the, 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 the advice was pick it up carefully, put it in a clean plastic bag. I got some rubber gloves, you know, and, and collected it up as far as I could. Um, and later that day, I reported it to the, the, the people who run the fireball network, the cam camera network, which looks at fireballs. Um, and they came straight back to me asking me where we were. And so I said exactly where we were. But then funnily enough, I didn't hear anything for until the Wednesday. 
Um, I, think, I think that was partly because there was a bit of an email issue with the, with the Natural History Museum in London. I think I would have heard something earlier than that. But mm. uh, anyway, it was Wednesday and then, then the scientists started to arrive and, uh, and we, we found out how important it really was to them. <laughs> Wow. Uh, when you first approached it, did you guys notice any smell from it at all? No. No, we didn't. And it's funny you say that because when I spoke to my friends about it, they said, well, what, what does it smell like? And I said, well, I suppose I haven't smelt it, you know. Um, but no, to answer your question, there was no immediate um, kind of smell of, of anything, really. Yeah. I suppose there. because we... Well, it happened at 9.54 the previous evening. Well, yeah. we probably didn't get out there till 7, 8 no, o'clock in the morning. I, I started so, collecting it about half past nine the yeah. next day. In other words, it was it's been down nearly 12 hours before I picked up most of it. But yeah. certainly no smell, no, well, obviously no heat or anything like that. Just looked very black. So that's where it was very different from charcoal coals, you know, that you would have on a barbecue because they tend to be green and very ashen don't they yeah yeah and um you, you say you, that you were collecting it and well i saw pictures of it and it looked pretty much obliterated was that after you collected larger pieces what was the largest piece actually uh, recovered? I, I think the, the largest piece um from from ours was was about 20 grams and that, that was actually actually the piece that that flew the furthest I, I've, I've got this theory that that the big pieces fly far <laughs> the little pieces stay stay put um because the, the 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 larger pieces that we found around the garden were kind of further away and i think that this this biggest one was a good 15 20 yards away from from, from the impact point wow so you know it, it had flown quite a long way um, you know, we picked things up down the drive, 10, 10 meters away, that sort of thing. So it was. It yeah, was they were all over the drive. All over they? the place. And but, over the lawn. But they, they were pretty much pretty big pieces. You know, they weren't difficult to find because they you could see them straight away. You know, the yeah. the, the, the powder and dust had stayed in a, in in on the, the point where it, it had landed, but mm -hmm. but the, the bigger pieces had flown quite a long way. And and once the scientists had been with us for about three days, there, there was really nothing left. You know, you could you could see those those big pieces. Um, you, you mentioned um, both the the. Um, uh, well, you said scientists. I'm thinking a uh, planetary scientist, uh, Dr. Richard Greenwood, and, yep. and and also you mentioned the <coughs> London uh, Museum. Was it the, the, Nat the Natural, Natural History, History Museum, Museum? Is the major um, <laughs> collection of meteorites in the UK. I think it's it's on a par with the Smithsonian um, mm -hmm. for for what it's got. And then they, they told us that the one in Vienna is the other the one the other very big one. Correct. And then but that's when we started, we started to uh, understand or comprehend that that this could be a really big find. You were saying, oh, I think it's this is going to be a big one because Richard Greenwood rang up, didn't he? One on the Wednesday <laughs> lunchtime. And then he said, well, I'm only living in Oxford and Oxford's only about an hour away from us. So he he said, I'll be there within about an hour or two, <laughs> which he was. And he came yeah. and he was very excited and yeah. absolutely immediately said, he did say then it was a CM2. That's I know amazing. it wasn't officially classified, but he obviously knew what it was. Yeah. And then what was even more exciting, he well, as exciting, he said, oh, I'm going to phone up... Um, Ashley King from the Natural History Museum and he's going to come up this evening and we thought what it's going to be dark at half yeah. past eight and nine. And I, I think I think that was our first realization of quite how significant it is mm -hmm. because ultimately I mean you know and, and I know Tofa that it, it, these rocks are so dark aren't they and the logical thing would be to wait and to look at them in the light <laughs> but um, so we realised the significance when we realised that Ashley was going to come that same day and look at them in the dark um, yeah. Yeah. And, you know I said I guess making it more difficult than it needs to be um, but yeah that was our realisation yeah. that of quite how significant this must be. No we're yes. in lockdown so we couldn't <laughs> we felt very inhospitable because we couldn't invite anybody into the mm. house to look at the the rock so 
we had to kind of light up the lounge that then would shine on a little table so they're all over here we've we all our torches and stuff stood, stood outside here I'm in the garden from 8 30 till 10 30 at night <laughs> um, whilst these experts were weighing bags of black oh. on, our scale. on our kitchen scale on our kitchen scale classic oh man it was, uh, it, was, it was surreal but it but it's an evening that we will never forget yeah, yeah was, exciting. Think, you could see the, the the thrill on their faces and you you that, yeah. that was when it really hit home yeah the excitement that. was infectious yeah. no and doubt mm -hmm. we realized how rare that, these things are that is classic because that answers like three or four questions i was going to ask you like when did, <laughs> <laughs> when did it really hit you guys that yeah a meteorite hit your driveway but it's such a rare meteorite you know and yeah. the, the specialty of it now um there's a this may be a, a an american thing so uh, I, <laughs> uh with, with all due respect um here in america if that were to happen the homeowner would see dollar signs dollar signs dollar. <laughs> okay um it is my understanding that you guys donated the the meteorite material to the national uh, museum yeah that's right yeah yeah, yeah. 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 That's right. can you please um explain your thought process behind that uh, i think we 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 just feel that it's it's of most value to the to science and and education um and then if if it, if it were to go to um wealthy individuals for them to keep and look at then i think our our thinking i don't know whether this is true but our thinking was that 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 would be only of value to a small number of people mm -hmm. whereas if it goes to science and education then it, it, it can be shared out amongst lots of universities and um and, and bring and get the most um work done on it you know, they've told us that they they'll be working on this for the next 100 years <laughs> and all that sort of thing yeah. yeah, and I, I think also when Richard Greenwood came, he said, you realise that this is 4.567 billion mm -hmm. years old. And I mean, that's just such an amazing figure. You yeah. can't imagine the magnitude of it. Mm -hmm. And you kind of feel, well, that doesn't really belong to us does it you know okay it's dropped on our drive but it, it's mm -hmm. it's nobody's property it's the universe and so we should be doing things to help the universe if we can understand better how it was formed how it's created you know mm -hmm. inspire scientists to to of the next generation to work hard to help sort out some of the problems that we've created in our world then that's got to be all to the good hasn't it really Wow. I, I applaud you guys. I really do. Um, I, I'm so glad that it found its way to your house. Um, oh, you're very kind. Thank you. Now, do you guys know the, or have you learned the history of other people who have been associated with hammer stones, with meteorites that have hit man-made items? Um, not really, no. We, we've been told about the one that hit a car in, in um, America one mm -hmm. time and the car, the car became very famous. <laughs> yeah. um, but no, I mean... I, the 1991... The 1991 fall that there was in, in the UK, yeah. I've read a bit about mm -hmm. that. Mr. Pettifer and, and his... Yeah, uh, and we, we, we now there. know that people go to the Antarctic and, and the Sahara deserts and Oman and places like that and they find these things which I can understand it now I mean having come close into close contact with them I, I think I could get very interested yeah, in that yeah, but yeah, I don't yeah, think yeah. I would go to Antarctica yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's quite, that's well, they need, they'd be easier to spot in Antarctica yes. wouldn't they yeah, that's what they say. <laughs> yeah. I, th I think we all feel that we, we will always be very interested in these things now and um, you know we, we, I think I think it's it's one of those life-changing events for us. I don't think our lives are going to be the same again, but yeah. it, that's in a, in a very pleasant way. We've, we've enjoyed getting involved in all of this, and I think it's, it's probably going to continue for a, a while at least. I, I was leading into that because, like, I, I think of, uh, like, there, there was one you mentioned, Peak Skill, that hit a car. 
the car yeah. went from being a ten thousand dollar junker to a hundred thousand dollar trophy overnight. There's a there's a media that hit a mailbox uh, called. Oh, wow. Yeah. Um, so there, there, and then there's a Silicaga so that actually went through a lady's house, bounced off her old time wooden radio and hit her in the thigh. So oh, wow. Mrs. Hodges is one of the only, if not the only documented person ever to be hit by a meteorite. Wow. So <laughs> she forever will be tied to that meteorite as the yeah. car will be tied to Peekskill, as the <laughs> box will be tied to Claxton. As the Wilcox family will be tied to Winchcombe. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think that well, is very generous of you guys to share that with science. I applaud you for that. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so, in the last couple of months, you and this is only two months now because we're talking about almost two months to the day, two days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, did you have any idea that a crazy Spaniard named Juan would be showing up at your doorstep? <laughs> 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 crazy. <laughs> Uh, uh, we, we we thoroughly enjoyed meeting um, new people. Like new people, yes, we met we met journalists, reporters, scientists, um, and it's been very very interesting. And um, you know, as I say, we don't know where it's going to lead. It's, there seems to be new new developments happening all the time. You know, we're working with the local museum. Um, there's a small museum in Winchcombe. There's another museum in Cheltenham, which is the, the, the nearest town. And we want we want them to have a piece uh, each. And we, you know, we've, uh, we've asked the, new, the London Museum to make sure that they get, get pieces. Um, so, you know, that will generate interest for those museums. Um, it, it might put Winchcombe on the map a bit more um, mm -hmm. you know, because it, it, it's a town which gets tourists anyway, but not, you know, large numbers. But I think this might attract even, even more people here so that obviously that would be good for the, the local economy mm -hmm. we're, we're actually thinking of putting a, a, together a website um just with information about our, what what we've done with the meteorite and any developments that there might be in the future if the if the scientists find out new things we'll, we'll put those on there although i'm sure they'll they'll put that out themselves um and any any other things that that we know um and that we hear about it we'll put those on there because i think a lot of people are interested in it i think it's, yeah. it's just something that you know as, as you are well aware with all the work that you do um mm -hmm. we, we want to share um the, the the news about this thing so we thought starting a website would be a, a good way to do that once we learn how to run a website which we, we don't know yeah. how to do um, that yet <laughs> my desire in meteorites uh, and my passion for meteorites have driven me to do a lot of things that are outside my comfort level i had no plans of ever being an entrepreneur uh, an educator or a youtube guy i just i, <laughs> you know, I think I, you know, i feel a bit the same and uh, you know i think we've got a, a lot to learn uh, about putting things out on the web but i mean that's the way things are done these days isn't it so uh, yeah. we, we want to have a go well i am uh i am super glad that you guys were open to meeting uh, and, and and having this interview with us today um i, I do my weekly um uh, video hangouts and been doing those for almost a year now and was reporting on on your media i'm calling it your media right um, <laughs> and, uh, on, on the fourth so six days after it happened we were wow. doing a segment on it on our weekly hangout and i've been, been, been reporting on it ever since so you guys are are my celebrities and my rock stars <laughs> <laughs> well it's good to have a good news story to report yeah, i think sure. um, yeah. and i think that's why we wanted to share it with with everybody as many people as we could really um, we were we were warned that had it not been for lockdown, we might have been inundated with people from all over the world. Yeah. You know, on, on the day it happened, I mean, as it was, we had journalists and reporters wandering all over yeah. the town. So yeah. we got a bit of a taste of that. But I think, in a way, lockdown um, just kept it down a bit more, um, you know, a bit more manageable. Yeah. Uh, whereas without that, so think, everybody can see the pictures now, can't they? <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, well, it was not possible to keep it quiet, even in lockdown, because there were so many journalists. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. Yeah, that's a that's a good secret to share with the world for sure. Yeah. You know? um, I appreciate your generosity with uh, your scientific material and your generosity with your time. You guys are just brilliantly awesome people, and I, I really enjoy talking <laughs> to you.
today. Please. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank, you. Thank you. Nice, Thank nice you. talking to you. Thank you. It's been nice to, to meet you. Thank yeah. you so much. I, I do have one really, really greedy request. Go on. If, if Juan could leave with a small baggie of dirt from your lawn, it would complete my, my sand and Stringfield collection. <laughs> <laughs> what? The law? There's can, none left. There, there's well, there, none there, left there's no there. meter out. You can have some soil. Oh, we need soil. soil. <laughs> what do you mean you soil? soil? You mean really? soil, don't you? Soil. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. We'll, we'll, lend, we'll lend him a trowel. <laughs> <laughs> You guys are awesome. Thank you so much uh, to Ron, Catherine, and Hannah uh, Wilcock. Thank you so much, guys. And I look forward to uh, tracking you guys on your webpage. And if I can help in any way, please reach out to me, okay? Yeah, we, look, we look forward to seeing okay. um, the, the, the report, the interview. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, incredible opportunity to take a look at the driveway where the, this amazing uh, impact falls. So, yeah, yeah. I am going to change the camera. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it was, what? Yeah, 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 please do it. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. <laughs> wow, thank you for that. What a, what a treat. And wow, a wow. That's it. Oh, that's... oh my word. See, there's a little bit. There's a little bit there. Oh my gosh! Wow! I was hoping for this like ten days <laughs> oh, in, in quarantine, twenty UK. Used to see this, buddy. Yeah. Take a look at that. I I do want to take this time to thank Juan Avilas with Jurassic Dreams Fossils for making this interview possible. He's the one who actually spent 10 days in quarantine and traveled all the way to the UK to make this possible. So thank you, Juan, very much. Welcome. I'm more than happy to be right now here. You can't imagine. Take a look at that. It's still completely black. And yes. this is like a small crater. Can you see right there? It's like a small crater. Wow. This wow. Is thank you so much for this opportunity. No That's amazing. Wow. Can you have your final and epic uh, final, buddy? <laughs> wow. I, what a treat. What an absolute treat. You don't know how many nights I've sat in my hot tub dreaming that a meteorite would crush part of my house. <laughs> Man. That is fantastic, guys. I, in my opinion, it couldn't have happened to a better and, and uh, a better family, uh, a more generous, scientific-minded uh, family. Oh my gosh! Well, Tover, I think uh, thank you so much uh, for being able to do this interview. So here you have the content. This, oh my was, gosh. A, this was an absolute amazing treat. I definitely want to show my appreciation to Juan Avilas at Jurassic Dream Fossils, as, as well as the entire Wilcock family. Um, thank you very much for making this possible and for allowing us to document this really historic, important event. You are, you are more than welcome, buddy. You are more than welcome. And uh, uh, main thanks uh, to the family that uh, was so kind uh, to attend uh, this interview. Juan, I hope you very much success in your hunting. Um, and I'm going to now uh, end this and insert a video of you hunting the strewn field two days ago and singing a quite pretty song. Thank you so much, buddy. Much appreciated. I will try. Bye bye, buddy. Bye bye. I love you, brother. Take care. Bye. I'm hunting in UK, I'm hunting in UK, I'm hunting in UK, but nothing appears. I'm hunting in UK, I'm hunting in UK, 
But no, sin no, sin no, sin no, no, sin appears. Well, nothing found yet, but uh, nice landscape, nice country, so beautiful, so really different from my lovely Spain. So right here you have an overview of Winchcomb, the village of Winchcomb. So the direction of the fall was from there to here. So we have a huge stream field. So well, we will see. It's a nice place to be.